All right, so next up on our talk about prescription drugs are drugs that don't need a prescription. I'm talking about over-the-counter meds. And while they don't need a prescription, they typically aren't used for recreational purposes as these medications don't usually give any type of a high. OTC medications are actually a really serious problem when you think about it. They're easily accessible and dangerous in high doses, and they're relatively cheap. Looking way back to our social determinants of health, OTC drugs are a huge problem to at-risk populations, such as indigenous populations or minorities, low education populations, and those living in poverty or in low-income households. In this lesson, we'll focus on acetaminophen or Tylenol. Acetaminophen is considered a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, and like other NSAIDs, works by inhibiting the enzyme cyclooxygenase, or COX. There are two types of COX enzymes, with COX-1, which is continuously released in the body and has a role in maintaining kidney function, GI mucosa, and platelet aggregation, whereas COX-2 is expressed in result of some type of injury and causes a release of prostaglandins, which start the immune response, causing vasodilation, tissue swelling or inflammation, and increasing the temperature set point by the hypothalamus. So inhibiting the COX-2 receptors is what gives us our relief from fever and pain. But the side effect is that we inhibit the COX-1 receptors. So we also get the GI issues and blood clotting problems that come with taking NSAIDs. All this should be ringing bells when we think back to our own scope of practice. Think about all the indications and contraindications for Tordal. A lot of them are directly tied to issues with inhibiting COX-1. The rest of them are tied to metabolism. So let's touch on that now. Metabolism of Tylenol and most NSAIDs takes place in the liver. Tylenol is turned into a toxic metabolite, N-acetyl-P-benzoquinone, or NACP, in the liver, and then immediately detoxified by glutathione stores in the liver. When we stay within the recommended doses of NSAIDs, this process happens immediately, and the toxic metabolites don't have a chance to do any damage to our liver. However, a sudden large amount of Tylenol, like in an overdose, can easily overwhelm these stores, causing the glutathinone to become damaging or begin damaging our liver. 150 milligrams per kilogram is considered a toxic dose. So for an adult, consider 25 extra strength Tylenol enough to be dangerous, with this number being significantly less for children. The symptoms of a Tylenol overdose typically don't start until 24 to 48 hours after ingestion, starting with nausea and vomiting and progressing to right upper quadrant pain, and then signs of liver failure which is going to be increased AST, ALT, bilirubin, and an INR, as well as you'll start to notice jaundice. The patient may also experience some hemoptysis and signs of renal failure and pancreatitis. All right, so treatment is going to be an infusion of what's called NAC, or N-acetylcysteine. NAC is an artificial glutathinone, which replenishes the liver's ability to detoxify that NAC key. Unfortunately, NAC does nothing to correct the damage from a Tylenol overdose, so early recognition and quick administration is really important. Activated charcoal can be administered if the patient is seen early enough in the overdose. So really quickly, I don't want to go too much into the pharmacology of aspirin. You should know that one pretty well by now at this point, so I'll just talk about the overdoses. Essentially, they'll look like TCA overdoses with severe metabolic acidosis, sodium channel blocking effects causing hypotension, wide complex tachycardias with a prolonged QT interval. Treatment will be just like other sodium channel blocking agents, a good dose of sodium bicarb. That's going to fix your, fix your acidosis and it's going to allow the kidneys to start reabsorbing and excreting that aspirin. 